What's up everyone, this is Asian with Jeep. Welcome to another Black Ops 4 Weapon Guide. In this ninth episode, we'll be taking a look at the Combat Knife. A final unlocked secondary weapon in the game, alongside a Swordfish Tactical Rifle at level 55. In multiplayer, the Combat Knife is one of the melee weapons in the game. You need to spend one point in order to equip it. Upon a successful strike, the knife can kill an opponent within one stab, regardless of an armor or health buffs. Range is really tiny, you must be within a touching distance. Even then there is no guarantee that the blade will kill the enemy. Handling is good, you move at 100% of the base movement speed, just like submachine gun and pistols. There is only one mode of attack, which is the stab and the rate of which you can swing the knife is rather slow due to a sluggish recovery time, which can be a risk if your knife fails to kill. The knife's launch is really small, though know that it may be subject to change in future patches. Given the tiny launch and slow recovery, the knife is rarely seen in multiplayer, as most players will prestige as soon as they have access to it. Also, the Swordfish Tactical Rifle unlocks at the same level at 55, so it is more attractive to use than the knife. The pistol or shotguns would be a more viable choice as a secondary. Only a few would use the knife to either attain the Dark Matter camouflage or just for fun. There are other alternatives to the knife, such as the Stiletto Knife and Bayonet, but these appear as the Operator Mods, which require 3 points in the Creative Class whereas the knife requires one point spent. While it is possible to build a class surrounding the melee weapon only, our class recommendation will also include a primary weapon to help carry you to a desired location where you can perform your wet work in order to attain the precious gold camouflage. There are no attachments for the knife and we will spend the second point for the weapon of your choice within a primary category. The SMG is fine to have, with higher mobility that can get you to a perfect spot for flanking or ambushing. Be sure to have the suppressor as an attachment to maximize your stealth advantage. For the gear, choose the acoustic sensor to assist on finding enemies nearby, especially when you are stationary or waiting for the enemies to walk past you. This gear will increase the enemy's footsteps and gives you a sixth sense ability with an indicator that appears on the minimap if they are nearby. For the equipment, we'll be using the Combat Axe with an ability to kill enemies should your toss meets their flesh. And you can pick up your axe right where it lands to avoid a recharging time. We will elect like four perks that will increase your resistivity, mobility, and stealth. The first perk is Tactical Mass from the first tier, which reduces the effects of the tactical elements, ensuring that your mobility gets a least penalty when taking damage from tactical equipment. The second perk is Lightweight from the second tier, which increases your sprinting speed and takes no fall damage. The faster running speed can make a difference when you're chasing someone from behind, as you're likely to catch them sooner than without the perk. The elimination of fall damage is nice to have when you need to escape from tall structures. The third perk is Ghost from the third tier, which will prevent you from appearing on the enemy's UAV while on the move. Finally, the fourth perk is Dead Silence from the third tier as well, with an assist of the perk 3 Greed wildcard. This perk will muffle your footsteps and resist a detection against acoustic sensor. This class offers more flexibility for a knife-focused build as you can use your ranged weapon to get to a desired location first, such as tight close range areas with doorways, and then wait around corners for a surprise attack with your knife. This is more reliable than attempting to rush head on with the knife after respawn, as you are likely to confront enemies directly first before you get to your desired location. After first few kills with the knife, be sure to switch up your location once in a while, as the enemies will be aware of your presence around the corner and find a way to get rid of you. Maps with tight interiors such as Firing Range, Summit, Seaside, and Gridlock are good candidates for completing the camouflage challenges. Though not all maps will offer tight spots for you to control, but you can rely on your blade when the opportunity arises. The knife has a slow recovery time, and each time you make a swing, your character may make a noise as well, so you need to time your swing right as swinging it too early can be fatal, and your stealth advantage will be lost. 
Overall, the Combat Knight does what everyone would expect. A sharp, deadly tool that can shut down anyone within a stab. You don't need to worry about appearing on the radar when swinging your blade, nor ammunition. Plus, your mobility is at maximum compared to other weapon classes. Of course, running around with the knife only to the gunfight is a suicide, as the knife only works when you are within a touching distance, and even then there's no guarantee that the knife will connect your enemy's flesh. Nonetheless, the knife is really effective if you use it in the right circumstances, such as flanking from the side or behind, or wait for the enemy to walk past you. If your patience holds out and wait for a perfect moment, the knife can be devastating, albeit within close range combat. And that concludes the guide for the combat knife. For the next episode, we'll be covering the Rampart 17, the second available assault rifle in the game. This is Asian with Jeep, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.